In a previous video, we saw how we could transform a third order, or in general, an nth order differential equation, linear differential equation, into a system of first order differential equations that are coupled together. And we can write the system as a matrix equation. The advantage of doing so is that we are able to express the system in a very concise manner as a vector y, which is differentiated, being equal to some matrix A times the vector undifferentiated. So and the vector consists of the three functions y1, y2, y3. y1 is equal to x, which is the original function that we're looking for y2 is x prime and y3 is x double prime. In this video we are going to solve this system using matrix methods. And uh, how are we going to do it? Well, I'm just going to claim that this is actually a solution. This purple one is a, my guess for a solution. And uh, here v signifies a an eigenvector belonging to A and lambda is an eigenvalue belonging to A. And so lambda and V are corresponding eigenvalue and eigenvectors. How are we going to check that this is actually a solution? Well, by inserting into the equation. So on the left hand side, I'm supposed to differentiate my solution, my function. And on the right hand side, I'm supposed to multiply it by a. And then we substitute the actual expression into the uh, into the uh, y variable here. I'm just going to write like this. And then substitute the expression. Like that. On the left hand side, I'm going to differentiate. So lambda goes down here. And otherwise, everything's unchanged. The v is just a constant. On the right hand side, I have, well, a times v, this part here. We've got to remember that v is assumed to be an eigenvector of a, so a times v is just the eigenvalue times v by definition of an eigenvector. So what I get here on the right hand side is then lambda v times e lambda to the power of lambda t. So we see that we have the same thing on both sides. So this is indeed a solution. Um, now, being a 3 by 3 matrix, we know that a has three eigenvalues. Let's just call them a uh, lambda a, lambda b, and lambda c. So I'm able to write um, three solutions of this type here, this type here, using those three eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. So they would look something like this. I guess I could call them y a is equal to v a times e to the power of lambda a t. So that's the first eigenvalue and its eigenvector. And I can construct another solution, same, same fashion, and a third solution. Now I know that there's no guarantee that all these eigenvalues either, uh, couldn't be the same number, or two of them could be the same number, but for now we're just going to assume that we have three distinct eigenvalues. So no double roots or triple roots here. This means I can construct the general solution. Let's just call that y. y1, y2, y3 as a linear combination of those linearly independent solutions. So c1, c2, and c3 here are arbitrary constants that I can 
um, <clears throat> determine using initial conditions if I like. Uh, but for now, this is actually the general solution to my problem. I can write it a little more detail here. C1 VA e to the power of lambda AT. And actually, I can write it even more graphically just to illustrate what's, what this actually is. I mean, VA is a vector. It's an eigenvector, so it has three components. It's a three-dimensional vector. Multiply it by this eigenvalue here. The same thing goes for VB. That's also a three-dimensional vector. Um, and so is VC. I haven't found them yet. I haven't found those eigenvectors, but I know that this is what they will look like. So I've actually found all of the solutions now to these three functions. But mind you that this is typically the one that we're interested in, y1, because it represents the original function. Maybe we're interested in x prime and x double prime too, but typically y1 is the one we're interested in. So we're only interested in the, in the first component of this vector that I have over here. If I add all these things up, I'm going to get a, a giant vector. It's a three component vector with a long expression up here and a long expression here and here. But nevertheless, it's just a vector and I'm mostly interested in the first component of that. Now we're going to look at the actual numerical example that I have here. So here we are on a new page. Here we have the system of equations here in the matrix uh, notation. And here we have the general solution. I just want to put some numbers in now. So obviously I have to find the eigenvalues of A and the corresponding eigenvectors. And here they are. We're not going to spend time uh, finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we can ask the computer to do that. And basically what we have to do is substitute these vectors and numbers into this uh, expression here. Notice that we have um, two complex conjugates as, you know, these two eigenvectors are complex conjugates and so are the uh, eigenvectors. Um, this means that our solution will be complex, but let's just write it. All right, so here we are. That's the general solution um, to, to this problem. And again, we're mostly interested in y1. And this vector here is y1, y2, y3. So if I wanted to extract y1, it would look something like this. And uh, again, notice that this is in fact a complex solution. Typically we would want the real part of the solution, uh, we can ask the computer to find the real part for us. Um, so the last thing we will cover here is uh, how to determine those arbitrary constants here. And uh, that is done by specifying, that could be done by specifying the initial conditions. So let's imagine we have initial conditions which are um, at time zero, x is equal to two, x prime is equal to zero, and x double prime at time zero is equal to minus one. That in turn, turn means that, um, well, this is y1 at time zero, this is y2, at time zero, and this is y3 at time zero from the way we defined those uh, new functions, y1, y2, y3. Um, but y1 as a function of t, y2 as a function of t, y3 as a function of t is exactly what we have up here. So you can write this as an equation saying two zero minus one is equal to that thing here
which in turn is the same as this expression up here, in which we set t equal to zero. And if we do that, we get something like, um, sorry, c1 times the red ve vector. I'm just going to write va instead of the numbers up here, because that's what we call it, va. Um, and then times e to the power of minus 2.68 times 0, because we're setting t equal to 0 here. So this just becomes 1 when t is 0. So there's no reason to write that. So I'll just continue. c2 times green eigenvector here, vb, which is this eigenvector, or that one up here. And again, times e to the power of this number times 0, because t is 0, that's just 1 again. So no need to write that. And then finally we get c3 times the yellow eigenvector vc. So what we have here is in fact three equations in three unknowns, because each of these vectors has three components. So we can restate that into a matrix equation, which would look something like this, or not well, exactly like this, actually. First column is the VA vector, second column is the VB, and the third column here would be the VC. And um, the unknowns we have in the vector over here, c1, c2, c3, and the right-hand side is 2, 0, minus 1. So those are the initial conditions. Those are the arbitrary constants. And these are the eigenvectors. And when we solve that for c1, c2, c3, then we found... the particular solution corresponding to these initial conditions here.